August 25th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Psalm chapter 106 from the Old Testament. Praise the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good and His loyal love endures. Who can adequately recount the Lord's mighty acts or relate all His praiseworthy deeds? How blessed are those who promote justice and do what is right all the time. Remember me, O Lord, when you show favor to your people. Pay attention to me when you deliver, so I may see the prosperity of your chosen ones. Rejoice along with your nation and boast along with the people who belong to you. We have sinned like our ancestors. We have done wrong. We have done evil. Our ancestors in Egypt failed to appreciate your miraculous deeds. They failed to remember your many acts of loyal love, and they rebelled at the sea by the Red Sea. Yet he delivered them for the sake of his reputation, that he might reveal his power. He shouted at the Red Sea, and it dried up. He led them through the deep water as if it were a desert. He delivered them from the power of the one who hated them, and rescued them from the power of the enemy. The water covered their enemies, not even one of them survived. They believed his promises, they sang praises to him. They quickly forgot what he had done, they did not wait for his instructions. In the wilderness they had an insatiable craving for meat, they challenged God in the desert. He granted their request, then struck them with a disease. In the camp they resented Moses and Aaron, the Lord's holy priest. The earth opened up and swallowed Dathan. It engulfed the group led by Abiram. Fire burned their group. The flames scorched the wicked. They made an image of a calf at Horeb and worshipped a metal idol. They traded their majestic God for the image of an ox that eats grass. They rejected the God who delivered them, the one who performed great deeds in Egypt. Amazing feats in the land of Ham, mighty acts by the Red Sea. He threatened to destroy them, but Moses, his chosen one, interceded with him and turned back his destructive anger. They rejected the fruitful land. They did not believe his promise. They grumbled in their tents. They did not obey the Lord. So he made a solemn vow that he would make them die in the desert, make their descendants die among the nations and scatter them among foreign lands. They worshipped Baal of Peor and ate sacrifices offered to the dead. They made the Lord angry by their actions and a plague broke out among them. Phineas took a stand and intervened and the plague subsided. This brought him a reward, an eternal gift. They made him angry by the waters of Meribah, and Moses suffered because of them, for they aroused his temper and he spoke rashly. They did not destroy the nations as the Lord had commanded them to do. They mixed in with the nations and learned their ways. They worshipped their idols, which became a snare to them. They sacrificed their sons and daughters to demons. They shed innocent blood, the blood of their sons and daughters, whom they sacrificed to the idols of Canaan. The land was polluted by bloodshed. They were defiled by their deeds and unfaithful in their actions. So the Lord was angry with his people and despised the people who belonged to him. He handed them over to the nations and those who hated them ruled over them. Their enemies oppressed them. They were subject to their authority. Many times he delivered them, but they had a rebellious attitude and degraded themselves by their sin. Yet he took notice of their distress when he heard their cry for help. He remembered his covenant with them and relented because of his great, loyal love. He caused all their conquerors to have pity on them. Deliver us, O Lord our God. Gather us from among the nations. Then we will give thanks to your holy name and boast about your praiseworthy deeds. The Lord God of Israel deserves praise in the future and forevermore. Let all the people say, We agree. Praise the Lord. God, too often we read things from the Old Testament and can't imagine how in the world they apply to us. Those people lived so long ago. They lived in such a different time and place than we did. They handled things so completely different. How in the world can I relate to them? Yet, as I was recording this, my heart almost broke. When I read uh, verse 20, they traded their majestic God for the image of an ox that eats grass. And we may not 
necessarily trade you for an image of an ox that eats grass, but we sure have traded our grace-filled, mercy-giving, sovereign God for things like TV and sexual pleasure and our own wants and desires and cars and houses and labels at work. We've probably even traded you for relationships that we wanted more than we wanted to do your will. God, there's so much that we have done that is exactly like Israel, where we're good for about three minutes and then we sin. And then we remember who you are and then we sin. And we keep falling back, falling back on our own will and our own strength, which gets us absolutely nowhere. And it's truly baffling to me in kind of an ironic way, truly baffling to me that we have seen for thousands and thousands and thousands of years, people try and do this on their own and fall without you. Do this on their own with their own will and fall without you. And yet here I am today doing the exact same thing. All these years have gone by with all these people to learn this lesson from. And I know how amazing you are. I know that you are sovereign. I know that you love me. I don't have any idea how much, but I know that you love me. I know that you forgive me. I know that we have an amazing relationship, but I know that I still keep screwing it up. I keep choosing my selfishness, my desires to sin, to have what I want to have over your will. I keep choosing that instead of like it says in this verse, my majestic God. God, help me today. Help me today to choose you. To choose you and your sovereignty. To choose you and your grace. To choose you and your mercy. To choose you and your strength. I don't know when it's going to get through my thick head that I cannot do this without you. I can't keep making choices that are about what I want. Because it never works out. I rarely, sadly, don't have the same desires as what you have for me. God, please help me see these steps very clearly that you want me to take. And then give me the power and the desire to do those steps. To do what pleases you. I don't want to trade you in for anything. Whether that be watching TV that's inappropriate, being in a relationship that's not your will, seeking fame for my own ego, whatever it is that I'm trading you in for, God, please help take those out of my life. God, all I want is you. I know that clearly in my heart, all I want is you. Now, please just help me abide by that. Help me understand how easily it is for me to get off track as soon as I go, oh, I think I got this. At least I can do this part. I don't need God for this. And then I suddenly get sidetracked with all of these things that don't matter and in fact can become very sinful things in my life. God, help me to never trade you in for anything else in the whole world. You are my whole world. And I don't want to dilute how amazing that is and how incredible our relationship is with things of this world. In your son's name I pray. Amen.